Morning everyone, it's Clutch here from the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. Today you're tuned in for another episode of Writer's Manual of Common Tasks, the series where I teach you how to do common tasks that I think every writer should know. So in today's episode, we're talking about spark plugs. Now, my engineer, right under this cover, is some spark plugs. And we're going to go through how, what you need to be looking for with them, how to do it, and you might find out it's a relatively simple process, so stay tuned. All right, so what you're going to need for this task. Now, first of all, you're going to need all the things that what it, you're going to have to do whatever you got to do to get those spark plugs. I'm not going to list those tools, but basically what I'm listing here is the main things you're going to need for changing the plug themselves. First of all, Find your owner's manual. I'd say there's a probably a 99.99% chance that your owner's manual is going to have a section called spark plugs and it's going to explain to you the whole procedure right there, what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to look for, how you're supposed to reinstall it. So that's the first thing you need. Second thing, obviously, you're going to need some spark plugs. Now, as far as I'm concerned with spark plugs, you go that same that same section where it gives you spark plugs and it should give you recommendations. For my case here, because we're looking at a standard plug, because we're not in a cold climate, we're not doing extended high speed riding. So for our case, we're doing the BKR 6E11 NGK, and we do you know we have the BKR 6E11 NGK. So. And honestly, that's what I would recommend. Just go with what your owner's manual tells you to go. Don't waste your money on some special weird plugs or anything like that. Just go with what your owner's manual tells you. Frankly, you change spark plugs in a motorcycle enough that, you know, I don't feel like you need to waste your money on the really crazy expensive ones. Unless you're doing some kind of crazy racing application or anything like that. For the most part, though, you know, no biggie. Also, you're going to need... A spark plug socket. Now, you could use yours in a tool kit, but like the one in my tool kit, it's one of the plastic ones where it's got the little little rubber insert in it and it's really hard to get the plug on. What I recommend is find one like this one. As you can see, it's got the little magnet on there because this magnet comes in handy when you're trying to seat on the plug. See how it's magnetic? See how that just pops right in there? And the plug just holds right on there like it should. So I recommend, and honestly, I would guess you're, it's not going to be too much. I I can't, I haven't checked the prices of them lately, but I can't imagine a price for a spark plug socket is probably more than 10 bucks. I mean, maybe it's more, but, you know, and I would recommend actually going, you know, go get one from, maybe go find like an actual decent one or a good one. Or something you know because sometimes the magnets will come out but I would definitely recommend getting the magnet one then obviously you're gonna need a ratchet to drive that now this one also has the ability where you could actually put a wrench on the end of it so I'll leave it up to you about how you want to do it and really that's pretty much it you know obviously your extensions you're gonna need or use are gonna vary depending on what your application is for my application, I need the extensions to get in there. So, but really, that's all you need. As far as price goes, what did we spend on the plugs this year? They have gone up a decent amount. Um, I want to say the plugs this year cost me like, oh hell, what did they cost me? You know what? I've got it written down on my phone. They've gone up considerably because of inflation, but. For the most part, they're still pretty reasonably priced as far as I'm concerned. Let's see here. They are now, okay, so these NGK plugs are now $379 a piece at Fleet Farm, which that's almost, that's a dollar more than they were two years ago. But like I said, they're still, you know, work plugs are still fairly cheap. Obviously, it's more expensive me because I got six cylinders I got to do. Most of you probably got two to four, so it won't be as expensive for you. The other thing I will say about spark plugs, sometimes your owner's manual, well, first of all, your owner's manual is going to give you your interval 
if one of you should be changing them, once again, I would just stick to that interval. It's quick, it's easy. Like I said, they're not terribly, exp they're not too awful expensive, I guess. And, you know, sometimes they'll give you the, they'll say, hey, check, check this, check the, you know, check the plugs. To me, if you're going to go in and check the plugs and you're going to pull the plugs out of there, honestly, you just as well replace the darn things. Unless you're doing just a quick check because something's not right. But for the most part, if if the owner's manual tells you to check the plugs, you know what? If you're going to go through pulling everything off just to check the plugs, you just as well go buy a brand new plug and stick it in there. You know, like I said, they're still relatively cheap and inexpensive. You know, you figure that's $24 right there. $24 every two years, that's not terribly bad because my interval is, well, it's actually about 16,000 miles, but I shoot about two years because that's about what I get in two, two years, a little more, a little less. All right, let's get those covers off, shall we? And there we go. It's off. Okay, so first thing, for you Goldwing owners, well, you're in here, you 1800 owners you'll see there's this nice little try to do it with both hands here or try to do this one-handed here there's a little see it right there that's your breather your crankcase breather make sure you pull that because it's probably got some oil and grime and everything else in it so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna get the spark plug changed this is only for you GL 1800 people um, but it just brings up a good point when you're doing this, when you're getting in there, if there's something else you can do in there, maybe do it right there and then so that way you don't forget about it and you've already got the part off anyway. All right, so how much blow by did we get? Uh, not too bad, just a little bit. Not too bad at all. Not bad for, what's it been? Yeah, two years. How many miles have we had since this? Let's see, those went at 71415. I think I'm, I'm yeah, so that's about 19,000 miles. Not too bad. It's not bad at all. Especially for an engine that's got almost 100,000 miles on it. But that's why I say, you know, that's why I tell you Goldwing owners, when you're at this step, you GLA turn to drain that because there is some stuff that gets in there and you want to get it out of there. So you don't want it to pile up over time. Otherwise, it'd make a mess, and, you know, whatever else. Plus, like I said, it gives you a good idea of how bad your, uh, your blow-by is. All right, so here they are. Here's the plugs. Kind of done my best to... Basically, you'll find them, look for the wires, you'll find them just like that. To get to them, basically give that a yank. Just like that. And there you go. There is a spark plug. When you're taking a plug out, first of all, make sure that you got the your ratchet or your wrench set right. Remember, it's righty tighty, clockwise, lefty loosey, counterclockwise. Remember that, because this is very crucial. If you screw that up, you got a good chance where you'll break the plug. And once you break the plug, well, you're screwed. And I need a longer extension. Or when I say I'm, when I say you're screwed, you're not. Let's say it's not. You're not completely up the creek without a paddle, but you're in bad shape. And really, to loosen it, just like that. It should come right out. If you did this right the last time, or whoever did this right the last time, it should, you should be able to put just a little pressure on that, it should come right out. And then, simple as that, you just unscrew it. And there she comes out. This is where that ma that uh, magnetic plug happens. Like I said, you get that right in there, you wrench it right off. Nice and easy. It 
So there you go, old one's out. Let's grab that new one. Now one thing I would recommend that you do before you install your new plug is you find your owner's manual. It'll tell you what the gap should be and need to check the gap. Now you ain't gotta get too fancy. I mean, honestly, one of these little gap gauges will work, you know, and you just do a quick double check. So, according to my owner's manual, it'll tell you what the gap should be. My gap should be between one and 1 1.10 millimeters, so. Well, as you can see, she's right at about one millimeter there. She's gonna have right wrist right there at one millimeter, so. We're at the right where we need to be. So, and it's pretty simple. You just basically put that around for your measurement and you guess. Now, this obviously ain't the best, most accurate way to do it. Honestly, a, a true feeler gauge would be your better option, but honestly, this is what I got. And this one too, this is one of those you can set your gaps with if you want. That's kind of what it's designed. It's designed for spark plugs. But uh, I always do double check the, the gaps. I haven't found one yet nowadays that, that where the gap was wrong, but still you know i don't think it's a bad idea to uh check the gap just double check also another thing i do before i absolutely put it on i always make sure and leave that protective sleeve on it because i don't want to just don't want to hurt that thing in any way so let's out of curiosity sake let's just check the old uh plug see what the gap is on it so we are at ooh, yeah we're probably right at about Oh yeah. Nope, we're right in there actually. So we got 1.0 to 1.2, 1.1. So this one's actually right within the uh, spec right now. So we're good there. And that new one was just a little bit tighter, but still it's good enough. Because one thing about it, that gap is gonna increase as you go. Yep, we can dang near get it past one. So we're gonna go with that. Now, just like anything else, everything's got a torque spec, right? But, for the most part, since a lot of companies still kind of consider this a uh, an operator level task, and what I mean by that is, you know, they, they think that the operator can actually pull it off. Uh, it's going to tell you, it's going to give you a procedure to do it. Now, owner's manual generally isn't going to give you a torque wrench procedure because they're kind of thinking, hey, you as the owner, you don't, they're, they're generally thinking most people don't have a torque wrench in their house. So, so this is where it's going to tell you the procedure. So, for this one, for mine, now everybody's is going to differ, but I'm going to tell you what mine is. Mine says for, uh, for installing a new plug, tighten it twice to prevent loosening. So, it says here with an NGK, which is what I have, an NGK, we're going to go three quarters of the turn after it seats. What they mean by after it seats is you screw the thing all the way in by hand, by hand, that's the big one. Don't do this, don't don't put any power to it when you're screwing it in. Just wrench it in by hand, make sure it catches right because you don't want to cross thread it, right? So when they say seats, basically is when you're hand tightening the thing. When you're doing it by hand, or in my case, we're gonna do it with this, and gets to the point where it won't move anymore. That's where your seat position is. So after that, we're gonna go three quarters of the turn. So let's do that. First of all, make sure I'm getting right in there. sure I'm turning in I am like I said you'll know when it's going because it'll start going in nice and easy and it, it almost it, it wants to go in but if it binds up at all you need to pull that plug out right away and figure out what's going on so right there is my seated point right there basically it's the point where let's loosen her up again and do that one more time so it's basically the point where you're tightening, and tightening, and tightening, and tightening, and then you got no more, right? So you grab your grab your socket and kind of hold it right there so you can keep track of what you're doing. So we're going three quarters of a turn. Of course, when we say turn, you know we mean full turn. So 
we're gonna go, so this over here is half, so we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom. So there we go. Turn, 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 turn. Keep going, keep going. It's gonna tighten up a little bit on you. That's okay. Tight, tight, tight. Make sure, get her to three quarters, which is what we're gonna do. There we go. That's three quarters right there. So, now it's gonna tell you to loosen the plug back up. So it loosens right up. Okay, we're gonna go back to where it seats again. Right there, oh, not quite. There's the seat. Now, for this next tighten step, we're going an eighth of a turn. So, eighth of a turn, that's a quarter, this is an eighth, so it's not very far, okay? Tighten that, we'll get that in there. Oops. This is where, once again, so we're gonna tighten that. There we go, we're tightening back up again. Make sure our ratchet's going the right way. Okay, so it's an eighth of a turn. And there we go, that's an eighth of a turn. And we're in. And voila, you've got the plug in there. So, I'm gonna do the rest of them, but for right now, I'm just gonna do this one to show you the procedure. Okay, so, last thing I do before I put the plug back together is, so you take your cap here, and then what I like to do, I like just to stick a little bit of what's called dialectic grease. I like to stick just a little bit in the plug. So that way, you know, it's good for the connection. Um, you can shove it down, you get that down there in the boot. It basically makes a little, it, it makes the connection a little bit easier, a little better, and also lubes it up a little bit. So some guys do, some guys don't. Oh yeah, probably help if I turned it on. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go, shove some in there, and there we go. And we'll shove that back in there. It should make, yep, you'll feel just a little bit of a click. And there you go, you're in. Now, obviously, you're gonna repeat this step on the other cylinders. I'm not gonna go through all of them for this video, but I just wanted to show you how to do one, so. There we go, we've done one, and we'll keep going down the line. A um, few other things I would do. So now granted, on here it's pretty, it'd be pretty hard to, to screw it up as far as what plugs go where. But some applications, you know, and what I do, and this is just kind of me, this is my nervous kind of twitch, because I'm kind of a little paranoid like this at times, is basically I just do it one at a time. Pull one wire, one plug, Put the plug in, go to the next one. I just do it one by one by one. That way I keep track of the wires. That way I don't put the wires in the wrong spot because that could really mess with your firing order, which you don't want that. That would be bad. But like I said, you don't have to do it. It's pretty simple to figure out, but like I said, that's kind of my, I guess you could say that's my, uh, I guess my little, uh, like I said, I have my nervous little things I do my little twitches, my little ways of doing stuff. So everybody's just a little bit different. All right, so we're doing this a little out of order, but here's the nerd portion of the video that I forgot to put in the start. So you might be wondering, well, what the heck's a spark plug used for? Well, so in an engine, to make it go, obviously you need your fuel, you need air, and you need what's called spark. Essentially, it's the engine's version of the fire triangle, where the spark is the heat. The obviously that uh, the fuel, the fuel that's that's the vaporized fuel that's going in there. Obviously, that's the fuel, and the air is the oxygen that comes in through your intake, right? So, and it's what makes your engine go. It it makes that because the engine wouldn't go if there wasn't spark. Now, this is for gasoline engines. Now, diesel engines. I don't know why I'm bringing up diesel engines right now, but I am. See, diesel engines are completely different. They don't have spark plugs. Diesel engines are, it's all with compression. So it's the compression that makes the explosion happen. However, in a gasoline engine, 
this is what makes the explosion happen. So let's say, let me find an example here. So it's a weird piston, but all right. So your piston's coming up in the cylinder, right? And it's gone down. It's letting the, the valves or the exhaust valves have gone out. It's pulling in the air and the fuel through the intake. The cylinder goes up, 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 and then it gets right to the point where it's supposed to fire. It fires, big old explosion, and it does that over and over. All your pistons do that over and over and over again. So, and the spark plug, once again, the spark plug is what makes it go. Basically, when it's time for your engine to fire, a little electrical charge gets sent to it, and basically, between the electrode, um, forgive me for not knowing exact names, basically between the electrode here, you get a little spark between them. It's almost like a welding arc, so you get a little arc. That's what makes the explosion happen. That's what makes your engine go. So when you hear a engine that doesn't have a spark, well, that's what it means. Somehow, for whatever reason, the spark isn't getting to the plug. The plugs are a very necess are a very important accessory on your motorcycle. So that's what's important with them. Another thing that you're going to want to do when you pull these plugs out and I'm going to include a link to an article here but you're going to want to read your spark plugs what we mean by reading the spark plug is we're looking at the electrode end and we're taking a look and we're seeing hey what's what's going on with this engine now I've got the gold wing docks right up right here now for a good plug you want a brown, a brown to grayish tan color slight electro rare, rare wear correct heat range for engine operating conditions well so right here Actually, yeah, there's some, it's a little brown on the, the electrode, on the electrode. It's not, not pure white. Actually, let's bring up a, let's bring an old one. Let's bring a new one here so we can compare it. Notice how it's not pure white, right? Because it'll be pure white when it's, when it's brand new, right? So, so obviously we got it. It's, it's a little brown, kind of brownish. Um, you know, it doesn't look like the electrodes worn too bad. Granted, these only have also only have like 19,000 miles on it. I feel like I could go a lot further with these plugs, but like I said, it's it's quicker and easier just to replace them like you should. But my electrode isn't really worn out too bad. It doesn't look like there's too many issues there. It looks like everything's everything's kind of on the up and up with this. Um, and you're gonna look over there. You're gonna see many different. Uh, you're going to see many different uh, types of, you know, what's going on, what's wrong. The big thing you do not want to see, and here's the one where, you know, and there's a lot of bad things, but one one big one, one quick easy giveaway is if you've, and like I said, here's 19,000 miles, right? So if you pull your plug out after some time and it still looks like that, that's bad. The reason why it's bad is because, well, you've probably got coolant entering the cylinder, which means you probably have a leaking head gas gasket or the block's cracked, or you got cracked. cracking. Either way, you're in trouble because the reason why it's clean is because it's getting steam clean. So that's a big one you wanna watch for. Other things you wanna watch for, you wanna make sure that like, you know, nothing's really melted too bad. There's not a lot of glazing or corrosion. Um, the other thing you wanna look for too is uh, if it's all black and dark, black oil that means you got probably some leaking oil plus the valve guides piston rings um you know you might have been blue, seeing blue smoke um and that might be a good sign that hey your engine's basically worn out so but my this plug looks good we're gonna check all the other ones to make sure but uh this one's all on the up and up so i'm pretty satisfied with it so one more thing i wanted to mention before we close this or before we get started here coming back from the future again. When you go buy your plugs, let's say you go down to the auto parts store and you get your plugs and the and what they're going to they're going the first thing they're going to ask you is do you want anti seize? No, you don't. If you're buying a good quality plug like NGK, you do not need anti seize. There's a coating on this that's basically designed to function as the anti seize. So, do not put anti seize on your spark plugs especially if they're good high quality ones. Obviously you're gonna wanna double check your manufacturer, but if you're using like an NGK plug, they'll say it's straight from the force. Um, Anti-seize can act as a lubricant, altering torque values up to 20%, including, including the risk of spark plug thread breakage and or metal shell stretch. 
Do not use anti-seize or lubricant on NGK spark plugs. It is completely unnecessary and can be detrimental. So, and honestly, for the most part, good high quality plugs, you do not need to use anti-seize. If the plugs are put in right, if whoever put them in, if you put them in the right way, if they're put in the right way, you do not need anti-seize. In fact, I've done spark plugs on this several times. I've done them on a, uh, let's see, I think it was like an O or 22 Silverado or a 2000, or no, maybe it's like an 08 Silverado. Um, I've done it on my 2009 F-150. My 2009, it had 100,000 miles on it or 96, or no, 90, yeah, it was like 96,000 miles on it when I did it. Original spark plugs and they came right out. So for the most part, if you're torquing them the right way, you're following the torque specs right, they should come right out. You should not use anti-seize. I would highly recommend do not use anti-seize on your spark plugs. Now, a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but here's the thing. If you got to torque them down so hard that you're using anti-seize to get them out, I, like I said, I, I feel like you're torquing them down way further than they ever need to be. Not everything needs to be good and tight. Snug is also okay. You can't, you don't need to have every single bolt to be stupid, good, and tight. Okay? You don't need that. It's unnecessary. Nothing's got, everything doesn't have to be wrenched down with a, a 300 pound impact gun. Okay? So, like I said, put your meathead brain away and do this the right way when you're doing it. Trust me, it'll save you some issues. And the next guy, it's going to help them out as well. So, but. Anyways, there's your little little uh, PSA for the day. Well, we've got the valve cover out. Or not the, it's not the valve cover. We got the cover out. We just as well clean her up just a little bit. Eh, cleaner than it was. We got some corrosion we got to deal with, though. Which, you know, this bike is... What, 18 years old? It's an 05. 17 years old. It's a 17 year old bike. Obviously things are going to get some wear on them over time. So, you know, it's just kind of the way it is. But, I tell you what. This bike's been running great for me. Hopefully it's got quite a few more miles in it yet. Because I'm not ready to let it go just yet. I would like to uh, keep it going just a little bit further if I can at all possible. Although I pretty much know the engine ain't going to be what fails me on this thing. You know, I'm I'm guessing what's what's going to would fail me is you know a few of the issues with these are well the alternator drive gear that if that uh, fails on you you have to go in and basically you know crack the case for the engine out so you can get everything out of there so you pretty much got to rebuild the whole thing which in one respect I think I would it'd probably be easier just to go buy a buy a reman one and you know rebuild it but or transmission that's another one that goes out on these eventually is uh and it usually it's still quite a while, but usually the transmissions like to go. It seems like after about two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand, which so I'm at a hundred thousand, so I still got plenty of time left. But you know, you never know; things do fail eventually. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if I did it all right. Obviously, you can see everything's put back together like it should be. And let's make sure we're good. Sounds like it should. Obviously you're kind of listening for anything weird. And actually, I'm kind of, I want to wait till it idles down just a little bit here. Obviously, when you're running your motorcycle inside, make sure you have the door open. Don't just leave it closed. 
Okay, we got her down to just about idle. Sounds like it should. I don't have a fault indicator light going, so I think we're good. There you have it folks. That's how you change your spark plugs on your motorcycle. And frankly, a lot of the stuff I just told you, you can use it in, you know, you do you can do this in your own car, your own pickup. Basically, the biggest thing is just just knowing how to get to the plugs. That's obviously a big one. And once you're there, knowing the techniques, you know, follow what your owner's manual says or your shop manual says or I mean, for God's sakes on on NGK plugs it tells you exactly how to how to do it on their plugs like they have a whole procedure of their own that they have you do so that's the big thing know your procedure know that you know follow that procedure to a T don't get stupid don't think it's got to be tighter follow that procedure to a T and just stay with it okay and you should be fine but anyways I'm Clutch for the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. I'd like to thank you for stopping by for this edition of Rider's Manual Common Tasks. Go ahead and if you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. Go ahead and leave a com out, comment. Excuse me. Leave a comment. Hit that subscribe button. And you can hit that bell notification icon for future video, all, videos. Although it's pretty easy. They come out every Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time in North America. Go ahead and leave a comment if you want. Uh, feel free to reach out through the comment section with questions as well. But also, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Just search Sodak Motorcycle Blog on both. Or on Instagram, you can find me at Clutch605. But, anyways, thanks for stopping by. And we'll see you later.